would be given by Dr. Sergei Kasulnikov, our uh, former and present colleague uh, from uh, who is now at Tel Aviv University, and uh, his talk would be about the wires and nature media as the super scatter. Sergey, please, uh, you're welcome to start your talk. Okay, uh, dear Mr. Chairman of the session of this uh, seminar, thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, so again, my name is Sergey Kasulnikov. Uh, the topic of uh, my uh, work I would like to share with you today is uh, why resonator is a broadband Huygens super scatterer. I have small technical question if you can see my mouth. Yes, we can. We can. Okay, beautiful. Uh, so quickly coming to the first question about my current or former presence. Uh, at the uh, it, it, it more university, so I wouldn't like that you call me the former, but I am the current one. So we are from all the team is from first of all Tel Aviv University, we are physically uh, from here, and also Moscow Institute of Physics and Technology, Chernivitsky National University in Ukraine, and for sure it more university. So thank you very much. I'm very happy to be here. Uh, in this microwave seminar, the outline of the talk will be divided for three main parts, introduction, main results and conclusions. In introduction, we will try to discuss uh, uh, just quickly about the difficulties of the small antennas uh, radiation and small particle scattering and so forth. How metamaterials helps us about that, uh, how geometrical parameters of these complex structures can enhance the radiation from small antennas and so on. Uh, on the questions of the directionality from small uh, particles, how currently uh, science can uh, deal with that problematics, on what is Huygens element and character effect, how it is all related to, to the main part of my talk, uh, which is related to this uh, circle array of wires. We will check uh, its electromagnetic response properties related, first of all, to the total scattering, uh, I will share our experimental uh, analysis, uh, uh, several setups in our analysis, which we used there, uh, how we investigated eigenmodes of that structure. Uh, in details, we will check for the far field uh, signatures and uh, uh, scattering efficiency and how generalized character effect uh, is uh, related to our part after that. So we will cover all that with conclusion part. So far, uh, we're dealing with the problematics of the uh, radiation from small antennas and scattering. And uh, every, uh, every person who is engineering uh, with the problematics of sm small antennas uh, radiation should uh, take into account, first of all, the uh, so-called uh, Chu-Harrington limitation, which tells us just the uh, trivial fact that the smaller the size of your operational antenna, the thinner should be its operational bandwidth. There are several ways to suppress that kind of limitation, and one of that is related to the, to the so-called combination of several types of uh, uh, eigenresonance mode of the structure. There are, for example, papers uh, uh, were published uh, already around 10 years ago by, by papers of Rowan and Pan, and they showed the theoretical approach on the uh, combination of several types of resonances in uh, the so-called uh, cylindrical and spherical uh, uh, geometries for the core shell metal dielectric particles. And uh, they, at least theoretically, they predicted that it would be possible to apply some complex approaches to, uh, to suppress this limitation. In any case, if we are dealing with a simple uh, lossless uh, ideal case of small electric or, or magnetic uh, dipolar resonance. This thing uh, tells us about the next limitation. The first one tells us the Joule Harrington limit is related to the width of the operational bandwidth of your structure. Uh, this limitation tells us that in any lossless structure, if you are under condition of the sub wavelength antenna or scatterer, you cannot radiate more than 2L plus 1 lambda square or 2 pi. And for the simplest case of a single channel, when you have only one degree of freedom, only, for example, electric dipole resonance in your structure exists, then your scatterer cannot scatter more than 3 lambda square over 2 pi. And this is called single channel limitation. 
in our work, we will discuss on the problems on how to how to beat this limitation. Uh, and as I already mentioned, it's possible, at least theoretically, to combine several types of resonances. However, uh, what are the applicable tools uh, in order to solve that problem? And I hope everybody in this audience uh, today are familiar with the term on what, it are, uh, what the metamaterials are. And I would not stay uh, too long time at this slide. We know that uh, metamaterials helps us to efficiently operate with electromagnetic properties. You can design an artificial meta atoms and take in, uh, and take the the uh, electromagnetic response uh, on 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 the shape and width and form that you want. Uh, those. Uh, this is like the first point of the efficient uh, uh, design of antennas, which I would like to formulate at, at this po point, which is uh, which can be applied with the uh, metamaterials tool. It is the uh, combination of this smart complex technology in order to 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 design the internal uh, parameters of these complex structures. On the other hand. Uh, going a bit far from uh, microwave approach or metamaterial approach, we know from plasmonics that not only the internal parameters uh, affect for the overall electromagnetic response, but also it is known uh, that, for example, for the gold spheres uh, from me theory, we know that at the frequency uh, range area in the visible light, uh, where the real part of its permittivity is around minus two, sub-wavelength spheres, they do have this so-called plasmon resonance. And also they were all, uh, all already uh, uh, 15, or almost 15 years ago, even experimental, works shown that also the overall shape uh, changing effects for for the electromagnetic response of your uh, or, or in the desired way that you want to create in simple words it means that for example if you have a small uh, uh, spherical particle which uh, uh, has its uh, plasmon resonance in the green visible light, you can change its, its shape, its form, and then you will shift this uh, frequency position of this resonance. Those uh, we conclude uh, at this uh, introductory point on two uh, most important uh, design uh, rules for metamaterial uh, inspired antennas or scatterers. Uh, and they are related to the geometry and to its geometry and to its effective internal material parameters. Another important thing related to efficient scatterer is uh, also related to the so-called uh, directive uh, radiation from the antenna. In the classical approach, it is known that it's uh, impossible to achieve a high, uh, high, high gain of the antenna or high the, the directivity uh, high directionality of small particles because in, in the classical approach is known that uh, G max uh, of your um, of your radiator is related to the aperture size uh, to the uh, to the ratio of the aperture size to the operational wavelength. So it means that you you never able to excite uh, good directionality without combination, uh, at, le at least if it is not a resonant case. Uh, however, uh, uh, there were uh, theoretical works th that showed that it's, again, it's possible to combine uh, several types of uh, multipolar resonances in this kind of uh, sub-wavelength structures, at least uh, in, for example, in paper by Tsiolkovsky from 2017, he showed that it, the, theoretically it's possible to, to take a huge amount of uh, different types of uh, uh, multipolar resonances in the same uh, sub-wavelength area, and you will get this so-called needle radiation high directivity pattern. Uh, the same related works uh, also, we are coming back to this uh, Rohan and Fan papers, they also discussed these problematics in their uh, original works published uh, about 10 years ago. However, all this uh, stuff is theoretical stuff. And in practice, usually there are two main difficulties. 
The first one is related to the fact that if you combine several types of high order resonances, the higher the order of the uh, eigenmode of the resonance of your structure, the uh, more uh, near field power is concentrated in the area of your structure. This means that the only, um, uh, this means that if you would apply some kind of lossy materials, and in, in nature we know that uh, almost every material has this uh, kind of loss, uh, lossy properties, uh, you, the energy of your structure would lose and their uh, lose and their scattering abilities would degrade dramatically. So the first thing we would like to not to deal with is the internal metamaterial are the internal metamaterial losses next case is the uh, so uh, is, uh, a lot of people who works with met the metamaterials they know that many effects are in the in the practical realization many things are strongly dependent on the fabrication tolerance meaning that if your structure would be complex enough then uh, uh, disorder of several percents inside inside your metamaterial bulk metamaterial structure can affect uh, dramatically to the performance of the final structure and destroy all the desired effects. Those we would like to apply first uh, as lossless metamaterials as possible in order to confirm the theoretical predictions in the. Uh, uh, in our results. And second, try to avoid this complex bulky metamaterial structure. Thus, our design would consist only of the wires distributed on the surface of the imaginary, uh, imaginary uh, cylinder. Uh, uh, before coming to the, uh, this is the final part of the introduction, but before coming to the main part, uh, let me please also uh, uh, share some words about on what, what, what is Huygens element and Kerker effect. First of all, well, while I was pre preparing to this uh, paper, I would like to underline for all the students, PhD students who are here, that in the um, uh, departments of physics YouTube channel, you can find uh, a set of uh, uh, videos related to this problematic, uh, also by Andrei Bogdanov, but uh, particularly I'm speaking about this short video of 15 minutes where Kristina Fizuk explained in uh, quite a simple but understandable manner on what is this combination of electric and magnetic uh, point resonances and how they affect, uh, uh, how, how this Huygens source can be created. As a, as a summation of those two. And um, uh, so pl please refer there when you have uh, free 15 times of your life. And uh, I, uh, I hope they should be good enough for everybody who is working on science in, in our department. So um, all the story started in 1983 by work of Kerker, where he showed that the uh, equality of epsilon nu or equality of magnetic and uh, electrical uh, multipolar uh, resonances combinations. Uh, he started from these uh, um, dipolar cases. He showed theoretically that it's possible to, to have, uh, to, to, to exclude the backward scattering. However, in practice, we do have, always do have two uh, similar uh, difficulties related uh, to the case that if you want to design a resonance Huygens element, it works in a thin uh, region where your realization of magnetic and your realization of electric dipolar resonances in your complex uh, sub wavelength structure, they interfere constructively. In non-resonance scale, uh, there is another problem that it can be broadband. However, this strongly affects for the scattering efficiency. For example, the simplest case of the uh, when your uh, electrical and magnetic uh, parts are equal is just a vacuum. And you know that everything uh, from the uh, plane wave uh, trans uh, transferring through the vacuum uh, media is going into the direction of, of, of propagation. 
but your uh, scattering properties of vacuum are also not 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 very good uh, now we are starting uh, with the main results of the research for, which i wanted to to share with you today we took into account a uh, uh, structure consisting of uh, uh, resonant uh, dipole me metallic dipoles and uh, <clears throat> We will, uh, uh, in, in this case, we are going to uh, investigate how to maximize the scattering properties, uh, the general scattering properties of this device. So we have fixed initial parameters uh, that the radius of our imaginary cylinder equals to 33 millimeters and uh, uh, this uh, length of, of our dipole is equal to 16.7 millimeters in order to keep the uh, resonance uh, wavelength of the structure to be around two gigahertz. This was just realization in order to 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 confine with our uh, experimental tools, which we have that our camera works uh, in that frequency region. And, and um, uh, going towards the next uh, uh, the next uh, results, which I will share with you, we, uh, already at this point we know uh, that in, in, in this design, when uh, there is only one degree of freedom for the current currents to be in, in the structure when the surface currents can run either to the top or uh, to, to, to the up direction or to the, to the down direction. Uh, in this kind of symmetrical structure, we can estimate n plus one over two uh, independent modes in case when the number of the scatterers is odd and n over two plus one when n is even. Uh, meaning that, for example, for 10, 10 structures, there should be, uh, uh, or 11 structures, we are estimating something like uh, six, six modes, uh, yeah, six, six independent modes, which we, they will be discussed a bit later on in details. But now, uh, if we consider the central, in the central part, you can see this two-dimensional graph uh, where we are trying to maximize the scattering efficiency depending on the uh, fixed R and L parameters, but we are changing number of equally distributed wires uh, around our cylinder. We started just from one wire, then we set uh, the, uh, another wire in the middle, then we put three wires equally distributed, four wires, six wires, and so on. And you can see that the general uh, uh, scattering uh, position, position of the, uh, of the overall maxima, still uh, proceed to stay in the frequency region around 2 giga. It doesn't shift, it is not shifting uh, very dramatically to the lower frequencies. However, one can see this, this shift. And also one can see that uh, there is a particular enhancement of the radiation when you jump from the lower uh, number of, 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 of wires, something like one, two, three, five, and then uh, it, it proceeds growing, but then this um, uh, amount of the energy scattered at the central frequency doesn't grow up uh, too high. So uh, on the right side, you can see another uh, representation of the same results. It shows us on the left uh, uh, part, uh, the maximum scattering efficiency. So what is the maximum point for every, every slice uh, 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 when you increase the number of your wires? And on the red line uh, related to the right axis, it shows its position. So we can see how it goes down or here it goes to the left smoothly, but it is not as important. What we wanted to, to be sure about, we wanted to be on the plateau of the, uh, of the maximum, uh, um, uh, that the incre further increment of the number of wires doesn't give you any more enhancement in the scattering properties. And you can see that we're, when we're going from one to five something, it, the scattering properties goes dramatically up, but then something like six, seven, eight, nine, ten, it doesn't grow uh, anymore. But in order to be at the plateau, we will fix the, our N to be 11, to be sure that it 
we, we are in this position already. So uh, also already at this point, we wanted to underline that the fact that uh, so it has uh, this structure has a scattering efficiency something like 15 so it is it scatters 15 times more than its physical size and uh, also we can compare that one with the single channel limitation so our combination of how, how how combination of several types of resonances we don't know which type of those there now combinated at, at the moment but we can uh, may, uh, we can conclude that it scatters uh, six times more than this uh, single channel uh, limit at least now let's go further uh, uh, a couple of words of our experimental approach we 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 tried to use three types um, of uh, experimental setups in order to check both uh, carefully check both near field distribution of this scattering particle uh, or of this scattering device you can see the, we, we fix our 11 wires in this stereo form so the first uh, method is the so-called near to near field when we excited all the modes uh, in the fixed position of the uh, of the magnetic loop excitation. Uh, so this way we can excite all the modes, even uh, non-radiative ones in the structure. And um, this uh, structure is fixed on the rotating table. Uh, with the receiving probe, we can, uh, we can scan the, uh, the, this tangential component of the magnetic field and its face. So this will be the most important. I uh, think, uh, but now just quick, uh, quick explanation on what is going on. The second structure will be related to the so-called near field to far field excitation. So we again, this uh, transmitting near field probe is fixed there, and everything is on this rotating table. And by this way, we can uh, examine the in-plane uh, radiation patterns of the modes which are excited with this. Uh, uh, near field probe established ne uh, quite quite close to our structure. So what is what is radiated to the far field, and then the final one is related to the so-called far to far field uh, radiation. This is just a classical approach to check the, uh, for example, Huygens element properties uh, in order to define the, the, the total scattering efficiency from from this structure and compare that with the simulation analysis and pre theoretical predictions. Uh, just the technical part, it was fixed in the uh, distance about two and a half meters from the, uh, um, from the sample till the, uh, till the receiving particle. And uh, again, the third one is a typical scattering scenario to test this Huygens uh, allows us to test this Huygens element performance. Step number zero experimentally was realized even without uh, the uh, receiving probe. We just uh, moved the uh, transmitting probe close to our device and checked uh, the uh, reflection properties with VNA. And we found that optimum position of the uh, of this excitation loop when all the uh, resonant uh, maximas are on the most down position at least on the eye is somewhere in between two neighboring wires and also one can uh, notice here that we, we can see six high quality resonances uh, which are clearly seen in this s11 spectra so we are estimating this is a, these are exactly these uh, eigen uh, uh, resonance eigen modes of, of, of the structure. Then uh, we are coming back from the experimental, we are coming back from the anechoic chamber to CST simulations, which I realized for this structure with, uh, with this eigen mode solver. And we found that there are, uh, solver found something about 15 independent modes, uh, modes of the open resonator. So uh, the simulation doesn't take, it doesn't take into account the environment. I had uh, this PML or open boundaries and only resonance modes of the structure, they are considered in the simulation. And <clears throat> at this point, I found that maybe it would be better to use uh, the, uh, <clears throat> how to say, uh, 
event number to, to make the structure totally symmetrical because what are the modes? Modes are uh, the order of the alternating or <coughs> changing the direction of the surface current. However, when the number of the wires is, uh, is not 10 or 12, but it is 11, there will be always some wire in your structure, which is uh, kind of the intermediate position. Uh, so in, here we can see the phases of these uh, surface currents. And we will go from the most uh, lower frequency mode. And you can see this uh, quality factor. With the enhancement of the order of the resonance mode, this quality factor will go up. However, due to asymmetry of the structure, because uh, we, we, we have these 11 wires, but not 10 or 12, we can also see that there are modes which are at the very close frequency position in, in, in the frequency range. Uh, for example, this mode two and mode three. Uh, mode two is at 1.886 and this one is at 1.887. Their quality factor is of the same order, 3.7, 3.7. And if you calculate a number of wires, which is with the downwards and upwards current direction, then you can understand that this is the same mode just of the shifted uh, of, of the shifted phase and all this story will um, will be combined up to mode 11 i think so uh so meaning that this mode 4 it is the same as for mode 5 and the same we can see here that mode 6 and most mode 7 but uh, again please note your attention here that quality factor of the of the resonance mode is going up now it is 20, then it is 100, the next one will be 1000. And, and the number of uh, turning of the wires uh, current direction also grows, uh, go, goes up. Uh, and we are going with this way up to mode number 11. And then uh, starting from mode number 12, we can see that there are to phase changing along the wire direction and also the quality factor of this mode dramatically drop down. So we will deal only with those modes which are only until mode number 11. And also we have to divide this number to two. So we, we understand that there are six independent resonance modes. The higher order uh, modes are again they are with a very low quality factor and one can see that there is a phase phase uh, change of the current along the the wired direction it means that these are not the modes of our interest uh, how can how could we uh, detect the same story in the uh, in the experimental part uh, so we are going to this uh, uh, experimental setup number one, when uh, the, uh, all the modes are excited with the near field probe excitation. And then we are going to rotate uh, the setup and scan this near field in a distance of two millimeters from, from, the, uh, from the setup. Uh, I think I should enhance my uh, speed. Okay. Um, so here you can see the magnetic near field distributions, but these first uh, modes uh, for the block mode equal with L equal to zero, one, and two, we uh, we uh, we found that we did not detect them in this uh, near field investigation because their quality factor was too low, and in fact we could not see them on this S one one plot which I showed you initially. All those maximas, when we combined, let me change to the next uh, higher order modes, uh, L3 and two distributions for L4, here on these two dimensional distributions, when we uh, uh, counted number of current alternations, uh, or number of phase shifting, uh, we found that those resonance mode, uh, uh, which we found experimentally, they are related to more uh, higher order uh, resonances. But the fundamental one with the dipolar uh, response and the uh, L equal to one and two, 
we just did not fix them in the experiment, but we did this for L number two and L number four. So you can see how these uh, uh, simulation results of the phase uh, uh, with the eigen mode solver uh, coincides with the experimental part. So this is a magnetic field distribution you can build uh, in, in CST, either with the plane wave excitation, but I did this in, for the eigen mode solar solution. Also, you can uh, see the, uh, uh, how the number of the phase changing is, uh, 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 can be seen also for this normalized uh, dipole moment uh, along the, uh, the overall uh, uh, scatterer surface. Uh, so, and then we are going to this L number five, and we can also see that there are two types of those in the both in the experiment and uh, in the simulation. So that's why we had those kind of pairs. But uh, but number of non-generative mode uh, is only six for L from zero to L equal to five. Uh, everything is concluded in the in the experiment uh, in this table, uh, where you can see that uh, uh, enhancement of the mode order uh, leads to enhancement of its quality factor. Uh, there is a particular something like forty megahertz uh, shift between the simulation and uh, experimental data, but I suppose this is just related to the uh, in. in an ideality of the of the solution, uh, for example, in the, the transient solver solution, also there would be some some shifting. Uh, what is more interesting at the at the case is that enhancement of the alternation in the currents. When we will go to this uh, multipolar decomposition analysis, we found that there is a magnetic response prevailing, and this is due to the uh, esta a close establishment of two electrical. Uh, response particles so they they create these those kind of difficult uh, shape patterns uh, which are uh, related to this magnetic uh, uh, magnetic sc scatter uh, re response and we will uh, a, a bit more detailedly I will take this uh, thing into account uh in the next slide so what is also important that higher azimuthal order also leads to higher q blah 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 this is uh, uh okay so uh, experimentally we showed uh, for the open resonator uh, um, resonance mode of, of of almost q equals to 6000 i suppose this uh, should be interesting uh, solution for the experimentalists uh, now we are going to the second uh, experimental approach and we can see the uh, in-plane uh, directivity. So we, we did uh, one investigation for the broad uh, detection of the scattered uh, of the radiated power abilities uh, from this near field uh, uh, probe excitation to the far field horn and integrated all those in-plane values. So this is not just like a surface integration of your points in vector, but this is just an in-plane ability of the uh, scattered power in, in, uh, on, on one line, uh, let's say like this. And you can see that also there are positions of the, of the uh, uh, scattered maxima and the width of the maxima becomes narrower uh, with the enhancement of the resonant mode order. And it is in, in confinement with this near field excitation. And you can see how the shapes of your resonant mode becomes more and more complex. And also the scattering uh, abilities with enhancement of the uh, upper mode becomes weaker. So, it, 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 it scatters less um, in a less power at the higher mode. Uh, those these patterns becomes more noisier. Yeah, they, all these plots they are normalized to unity in order to see them. But uh, every, uh, we, we should cl clarify here that, for example, this butterfly is like 
1000 mm. times uh, larger in scale than, than, than this complex shape. Just we see this enhancement of number of, of the side lobes and this is in confinement within uh, more difficult mode because of the enhancement of the alternating of the current direction uh, along this structure. Now let's switch to the final uh, uh, structure uh, where we check the scattering, uh, scattering uh, performance. So we check scattering efficiency. So this uh, left top part, for example, is just a CST simulation with maybe transient solver analysis. Uh, that's why uh, this higher order with time domain solver, higher order resonances, they are not as uh, in a good resolution. But with this frequency solver analysis, and um, uh, uh, you can see that there are uh, these high order modes, they, they do exist here. Uh, so uh, first, we can see that our investigation of the scattering properties, uh, scattering efficiency, it is uh, confined with the uh, experiment simulation, uh, the value and the width of the resonance and first three maximas, they are almost at the same position, except this 40, 40 megahertz shift and we, we, we deleted it manually, we just shifted our, I think, experimental. Uh, no, 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 I think I moved my simulation just for several percents in order to make this plot more inside with the experimental part. And here you can see the multiple decomposition prepared by our colleague uh, and co-author Raman Noskov up to, so he did this uh, decomposition for dipole order, quadrupole and octopole. And for, for, the fir for this first, uh, except the resonances with L equal to four and five, you can see that uh, uh, direct integration is uh, equal to this uh, summation uh, of the scattering properties. Uh, mean that sum of your multiples with, given with this black line is equal to the blue line, which uh, no, no, uh, blue line is sum, sum of the multiples and uh, uh, black line is the uh, total uh, radar cross section, and there uh, they do coincide. Uh, and we, so we prove the, which type of the modes and there exist and discuss them already in details, I think. Now, uh, about the broadband Huygens element abilities and predictions. Before, I will show you the plots for the forward and backward scattering and ratio and so on. Uh, I would like to, to look uh, in more details independently uh, for the phases of these multipoles calculated in the front and in the backward uh, scattering directions. And one can see that, uh, for example, in the back, uh, in the lower part be before two, two gigahertz position, there are combinations that in the forward direction, the phase of the electric dipole and magnetic dipole, electric quadrupole and magnetic quadrupole, the phase difference between them is much lower than pi. But in the backward scattering, this phase difference is around pi. So again, coming back to the predictions and analysis, which uh, were done with Christina, uh, uh, we, we estimate that this should lead to the to good forward scattering. So this uh, should work like a Huygens element for of several orders components. Uh, yeah, so I already told, but uh, she, she, she also tells there, and we did in our paper uh, results, which showed uh, uh, how this combination works. And for example, combination of your magnetic dipole and electric quadrupole gives the uh, c <laughs> similar uh, pattern in the scattering in the forward and the backward direction. But then if you combine it also with the electric dipole and magnetic quadrupole, if you add it there, and Raman also checked that for the point uh, combination uh, in his simulation, and uh, this theoretical prediction tells us that uh, there should be prevailing forward direction. There is a small discussion of that also in Christina's video, you can address there. Uh, now, uh, 
we define this Huygens element criteria on the if the forward scattering in the forward hemisphere uh, should be larger than two. And we uh, divided this radiation scattered to the forward hemisphere over the backward hemisphere. And if you look at the ratio, you can see that for the, uh, for the entire frequency range, almost everywhere we have this uh, the, uh, the value of the forward scattering, uh, uh, prevailing forward scattering uh, energy. And what is also important, there is uh, some particular point uh, in the backward uh, when the vector when the backward direction is minimized and this is uh, related exactly to the to, to the so-called Kerker condition when you de delete the backward radiation uh, so this is this point in the in the simulation but you can see that this curve uh, uh, qual uh, qualitatively uh, coincides with the experiment and for all the pre uh, frequency range, simulated frequency range, we can see that there is a forward scattering, but uh, at this point, the backward scattering is minimized in our experimentally realized structure. In higher order modes, the side lobes, they are also growing up, but anyway, you always have this forward scattering uh, uh, criteria. Again, uh, I forgot about my <laughs> animation in this slide, yeah. And also at this point, you can see that uh, in the in the uh, multipolar decomposition analysis, that the amplitude of the uh, multiples at this point it it, it is uh, is uh, is meeting the same point of the order of magnitude. That's why you have this this point uh, around 1.8 in the experiment when you have a strong forward scattering uh, from the structure. So coming to the conclusions, uh, in this uh, work we showed that uh, we, we demonstrated experimentally the concept of broadband resonance Huygens element based on the circular array of vertically aligned uh, wires. Uh, we showed this directional scattering over a large bandwidth uh, and uh, uh, we showed that uh, not novelty, but interesting thing that uh, a set of uh, electrically uh, reflecting particles can combine this magnetic response. We experimentally demonstrated high uh, quality of M16 and M32 poles uh, uh, resonant modes in this structure for the gigahertz range and uh, quality factor of the highest mode was about 6000 and this broadband uh, Huygens element performance was working. For more details, uh, please address our uh, paper published in PRB and there is an equivalent uh, archive uh, source uh, if you are not uh, in the university at the moment but it is still interesting thing. So thank you very much for your attention. And uh, I hope you can hear me. And if you want, you can ask something. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Sergei. Uh, it was a very great talk to listen to. Uh, uh, we have a number of questions. And I think the first one was from Stanislav uh, Golovsky. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, Sereja, thank you so much. It's, it's a very attractive topic indeed. And uh, very nice results obtained. I have a question, uh, nevertheless, uh, regarding the plateau effect that you have shown. Mm -hmm. So you you were mentioning that uh, when you're increasing the number of wires, you cannot anymore increase uh, the scattering efficiency. And uh, have you analyzed, uh, is it somehow related to the finite thickness take maybe thinner wires and uh, try to even more increase it with the, uh, putting them uh, on low, even lower distances to each other. Uh, okay, initial simulations, I realized they were done with the thin, thin wire approximation with frequency solver, you know that uh, method in CST, I think, yeah? Mm -hmm. So qualitatively, qualitatively, I wouldn't say that when I started to use this uh, 
finite uh, radius solid uh, scatterers that it affected a lot. So it was the same efficiency of the same order at least. Uh, okay. I would, uh, maybe I would check it or if you want, you understand that we can proceed the discussion by email and uh, I can check that option, but uh, dramatical uh, enhancement I, I, I couldn't find. So you okay. see that it is here, yeah. Yeah, yeah I see. And the, the, this number 15, so is it, uh, the same as you consider it uh, a, sil a, a solid cylinder of the radius R made of metal, or it is something else. So I mean, why why this number? Uh, so so I, I I may expect if if I if I increase the number of wires too much, mm -hmm. then they are so 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 much capacitively coupled that they are equivalent to a solid cylinder of, of the same radius, mm -hmm. like a, one large cylinder. So is it correct to say that they in this case uh, scatter with the same efficiency as just a solid large cylinder? I suppose that it should uh, jump down again because uh, this uh, the height of the cylinder, or, of course, it is a resonant height. Mm -hmm. I, I did not compare what will happen in this uh, extreme case, but it would be, yeah, thank you for this thing. I, uh, I, I would think of, on that. This is a quick simulation. What would happen if I take a metal cylinder of this radius and height? I suppose. Mm -hmm that at the point when when the wires will touch one each other you will lose all your individual modes there yeah, yeah? yes and exactly. it, it will it will jump to the case of very very poor dipole because it's it's like a wire of a very very big thickness yeah so so the mm -hmm. it, it should uh, radiate just like a cube of uh, of metal so it's scattering properties i think at the point when they touch each other when, when you had this shortcut, this uh, scattering should dramatically jump down. Well, the, the hollow cylinder also has some higher order modes, but I, in any way, I'm, I'm, I would be curious to, to look at this comparison. Mm -hmm. hey, thank you so much. Thank, mm -hmm. thank, thank you, Stas. We had a second question from Hadi Shamki. Yeah, hello. Do you listen? Hi. Hi. Yeah, th yeah, thank you very much for the presentation. I have, well, a couple of questions. First, um, I know over normal incidence, the number of modes is independent of the number of elements in uh, in a in symmetric polygon. So, but you now you have uh, side side excitation. So I don't know about this. Can you explain more how the number of modes are uh, is related to the number of elements? Also, can you uh, please comment on the coupling between the wires? Should be strong if the distance is uh, is very close. And the destructive interference should be stronger, also less scattering. So it doesn't add uh, add up to me here. Uh, the third question also is: Is the enhancement of scattering efficiency is mainly related to the fact that you have very long incident wavelength? And that's uh, and that's all. Uh, uh, don't go far from me, please. What, can, okay. can you please so, reformulate the third question? Because I didn't understand what... what the what, third what, question, you have strong scattering efficiency and you have also very long incident wavelength. So that's, that should be obvious uh, if you have long uh, wavelength because they are, they are related efficiency, scattering efficiency to the wavelength. So, and you have... I don't really know. I have on my mind the comparison between the maximum dimension of your overall structure to the incident wavelength. If the incident wavelength is too much longer than your overall structure, then obviously you will have a strong scattering efficiency. I mean, scattering efficiency. So that's the third question. Well, uh, I'm not sure that I got it absolutely correctly, but I, uh, what do you mean by very long? Uh, so uh, we have lumped oh, over two dipole, yeah? What is the wavelength? Sorry, what is the incident wavelength here? Uh, so you see that we are working in the frequency band, yeah, from one yes. to three giga. And at the point when we have the resonance, it is equal to the set when, when this is a lambda over two dipole. So the wavelength is two times larger than this, uh, this dipole. So at, at two gigahertz, it should be around uh, how much, sorry? Uh, two 
giga, <laughs> one giga is 30 centimeters, two giga is 150 millimeters. Uh, yeah, so, uh, uh, two giga and something, uh, the, uh, you see here two giga and uh, three, so this is related to uh, 120 millimeters. And also we have this shift due to the physical uh, width of the dipole. So I, I, I wouldn't say that you say correctly that this is, uh, it's, it's not a sub wavelength uh, dipole anymore. It's lambda over two uh, structure. We, we could decrease its size with loading in the middle or something like this, but it, it, it's not correct case to, to operate with the same terms as for the strongly sub wavelength point scatterers. You understand it? Yeah, yes, yes, I understand. So your your cross sectional area, the side uh, cross sectional area, is something like land over two. Land over two. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah, that's comparable, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you. Then, then for the first question, for for the number of degenerated mode excited in your structure, dependent on the number of elements, that one, please, can you explain? Uh, yeah, to be honest, I, I don't understand uh, what the the, uh, uh, the concept, uh, how how it can be that you, okay, if you, you mean if you would have a top incidence yes, direction if you have to these top wires, yeah. then, then these then... wires, they are, they, they cannot be excited with this uh, perpendicular uh, wave vector and your response should be similar to that one which you would have at, as for the free space, for example, then if you change or you don't change number of the wires in your structure, uh, nothing, nothing is changed, of course. But then, uh, in our case, if you are coming from the side low, uh, from the side direction, uh, it is related to the case as in the in, in the plasmonics when you, when you have this uh, TM excitation or, for example, of two two scatterers set up in the, in the uh, uh, subwave length distance. So there are two independent modes. For example, when the currents are in the same direction or when there is a current in one direction uh, and in the opposite direction in the second, uh, in the second uh, scatterer. So that's why in, in hand, and then if you have, for example, three, scatterers, you can have either all currents in the same direction, then uh, in one current, uh, in one scatterer, it goes up, in other two, it goes down. And then the combination of the unique uh, current distributions gives you the number of the modes. So it is uh, uh, always dependent on the discrete number. Uh, uh, let me also quickly uh, give you an answer for, the, for this second question and if you want we can talk a bit more about this first question uh, yes it works uh, efficiently only for the subway flank distribution otherwise when you are distributing uh, if you are making uh, that the uh, uh, distance between your neighboring wires becomes comparable to the wavelength either, either it is lambda over two uh, then the approach should be realized as for the circular antenna uh, arrays and this is uh, more classical and deeply theoretically and practically investigated things from uh, radio physics of 60s and uh, this topic is quite clear but there they operate with the again with the, the neighboring dimensions comparable to the order of your wavelength in our case distance between the uh, the neighboring wires is something like lambda over 10. And it always should take into account a strong near field coupling. All those meta surface and bulk meta wire meta materials approaches, they work only with these conditions. Uh, I hope this, this is clear, yeah? Yeah, yeah, it is clear, thank okay. you. Then, okay. So, so mm -hmm. you qualify the uh, interaction, the coupling between wires is strong or weak as a final answer here? Uh, it is uh, strong near field uh, coupling. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. hey, uh, thank you. I think we have uh, time for one more question. And I think uh, it was from the Jupiter room, probably by Alexis Labudinuk. And yeah, yeah. Uh, also, also uh, Sergey, 
please stay after you answer this question because there are also a number of questions in the chat. Uh, maybe during the next talk you all can answer some of them, but now we go on to the Alexei's questions. Yeah, hello, Sergei. Uh, thank you very much for a very nice and well-prepared talk. Uh, my, I have a question related to the quality factor. So uh, can you go to the slide where you demonstrate experimental measurement of quality factor? It's like something after 11, 16. Uh, next, next. So while you are going there, so uh, the claim and the conclusion that you have measured the uh, quality factor something like six thousand or up to six thousand. So, but I do not see it from the measurement data. Is like two point five thousand, uh, not 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 six thousand. So the question is, what is wh why uh, experimentally you observed it like two times smaller than you predicted numerically? So probably it's due to the like some uh, problems with uh, your prototype and so on and so forth. So there are two questions. So first of all, how you measure it? So how you really estimate the quality factor? So I suppose that just placing next to the uh, loop antenna, you have a contribution from loop antenna. So can you comment on it? And the second of all, of course, uh, how tolerant your sample to the minor, let's say, uh, disorder in the wire lens or let's say spacing between wires, especially for the higher order Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, to be honest, uh, uh, our colleague Dmitro Vavchuk was uh, calculating the, uh, he was doing the calculation of the quality factor and I'm not sure from which uh, data it was uh, taken into account, but what I can say directly here from this, uh, for example, from this uh, investigation of the scattering properties, you can see that in the case of the um, uh, uh, scattering investigation, it's difficult to take into account those kind of thin resonances. So it was, uh, now I'm sure that it was re realized with the near field uh, excitation. Uh, I, I, I suppose from this data, he, he was calculating this uh, estimation of the quality factor for the, uh, for the experimental analysis. Uh, uh, and uh, again, why the numbers are not as, uh, as sharp at, as in the, uh, in the uh, ideal uh, prediction by simulation. So you, you understand that the, uh, any slight uh, shift of, of the uh, ideal, ideal structure, it leads to destroyment of the eigenmodes in the structure. You know that uh, especially for, 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 uh, for, the, uh, for the case, if you take a meta surface of equal wires, for example, and then you put the uh, disorder, the, how the eigenmodes are destroying at, 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 at that case. So regarding the second question about the tolerancy, I think all those approaches from uh, wire metamaterial meta surfaces they are applicable here, but I didn't do it uh, in simulations or in, in experiment. We try to do it as fine as possible on my knee with, with some tools and instruments, but we, we did not uh, check what, how bad should it will be resulted if I uh, destroy some, something there. Uh, I can tell you that uh, we have uh, some next project where we try to tune this stuff to 10 giga and the sizes of your, uh, of our, uh, uh, of the length of the, uh, of the uh, dipole scatterers is something like uh, two centimeters or one centimeter or even eight millimeters. And then when you put uh, several uh, uh, scatterers nearby another and and with the shift error, something like half a millimeter, this affects strongly, uh, dramatically. So that it's, it's much more difficult to excite those kind of high order uh, eigenmodes when you have, uh, when you are working not with this centimeter scale, but already with this 
millimeter scale. So unfortunately, yeah, it's it's uh, all those approaches they are really uh, in, intolerant. Or <laughs> sure, sure. Seriously, and very very short question. Sorry, Michel. Uh, can we go to your results of let's say scattering efficiency when you compare it with uh, uh, multiple decomposition and also uh, like some numerical data you know, there? Yeah, okay. it's, it seems like scattering efficiency for let's say for the high order, it's like magnetic octopole, I believe, uh, should be higher than uh, for the, let's say, magnetic dipole, something like this, at least from your numerical results, uh, from the yeah, it, it, decomposition. Mm -hmm. But why in experiment and also in CST full wave simulation, you did that observatory? Uh, so uh, this is related to the uh, in this in the question of the simulation when we are dealing with this transient solver simulation you can in a pretty good agreement you ah, can I see I see yeah big resonances but high order resonances and when you have several or uh, several resonances in the same uh, frequency window transient solver time domain solver they they work badly so the the, the purpose of this plot was to show the qualitative uh, uh, satisfaction of, uh, of the of the magnitude and at least the weight of your of the lower order resonance already so here for, we were happy that we our experiment coincides with the with the with the simulation yeah. so for simplicity uh, we, we can say that orange curve is not very correct but in blue curve, you did that. You are not able to measure this effect due to the tolerance of the sample. Am I correct? Not. I am afraid not only due to the tolerance. I am afraid that even even as we assume to think that this polystyrene it is transparent, but in any case there is humidity, and when we are dealing with these high high order multiples, when your near field energy is very uh, high, both brass metal and uh, this polystyrene I, I suppose that also losses there they affect for this uh, high order thank you thank you mm -hmm. okay uh, thank you Sergey uh, again.